Today's episode of The Trainer is brought to you by Autel. Take charge with Autel Intelligent Battery Service powered by Autel Diagnostics. For more information, visit www.autel.com. The vehicles we service have become increasingly electrified, and this trend will likely continue as we move toward an all-electric future. The electrification of the automobile is also creating higher demand on the battery in the vehicle's charging system. But at the same time, it's robbing the vehicle of fuel economy, as power that could be used to drive the wheels is being used instead to drive the alternator. Ever since 2002, engineers have been using battery management strategies incorporated into the engine control module. These strategies maintain a fine balance between the needs of the battery while minimizing the load of the alternator on the engine. As a battery gets older, the internal plates degrade and more current is required to maintain its state of charge. The ECM, using a battery management algorithm, monitors the battery and charging system and adjusts the charging profile to accommodate the battery's changing needs. Another feature that is commonly being used on many of today's conventionally powered vehicles is the stop-start function. As soon as the vehicle is brought to a stop, the engine is shut down and immediately restarted as soon as the driver begins to depress the accelerator pedal. This has added a new demand on today's batteries, the ability to withstand more frequent cycling. What is cycling? It's the cycle of charge and discharge that the battery goes through, especially when depleted by something like the vehicle's starting system. And every time the vehicle has to recover from a deep loss, its life is shortened just that much more. To address the need for cyclic durability and more starting power, new battery technologies have been developed. And the two most commonly used in the automotive sector is the AGM or absorbed glass mat battery and the EFB or enhanced flooded battery. AGM batteries are built using a glass mat separator which enables all the electrolyte required by the battery to be stored within the glass mat while also allowing any gases given off during charging to be recombined, making the batteries totally maintenance free. AGM batteries are typically fitted to higher end vehicles with stop start technology. They offer more cyclic durability, over four to five times more than a conventional flooded cell design, while also offering more starting power, even in lower temperatures. EFB batteries are an improved version of conventional flooded batteries. This style of battery is widely used in entry-level models using stop-start technology. A few of the advantages of EFB technology include improved charge acceptance and increased cyclic durability, even when operating at a reduced state of charge. These batteries can also provide substantially more starting power with some makers claiming 270,000 starts over the life of the battery compared to 30,000 for a conventional flooded cell design. And that's important when the vehicle is constantly being restarted. And when it comes to maintenance of the three designs, the conventional flooded cell, the EFB, and the AGM, the AGM's charging profile is significantly different from the other two. This is because the AGM is a recombinant design. This means that gases normally vented to the atmosphere, as in a conventional flooded battery, are kept inside the battery case. These gases recombine to form water, keeping the electrolyte level constant and making the battery truly maintenance free. A sealing vent ensures that a positive internal pressure is maintained, which in turn ensures the recombination of the gases and preventing the cells from drying out. Should the battery be exposed to overcharge, this vent is also responsible for releasing any buildup in pressure. But at the same time, that's releasing hydrogen and oxygen from the battery that would normally recombine to maintain the electrolyte level. So you can see that an overcharge condition in this venting 
actually leads to permanent damage of the battery and its eventual failure. Batteries and their charging systems are not as simple as they once were, and neither are the inspection and service processes we need to follow when dealing with this common service item. Failure to properly test, service, and replace today's batteries could lead to premature failure of the battery, even damage to the vehicle's charging system. So how should you perform a routine battery and charging system inspection? Begin by performing a visual inspection of the battery, its cables and connections, as well as the alternator and accessory drive system. Make note of any defects found and correct them if necessary before continuing with your test. For this demonstration, I'm going to be using the Autel BT608 battery tester. Now this is a lot more than a battery tester as you'll soon see and can help even the newest technician in your shop perform a thorough and complete battery service every single time. Start by inserting the tool's OBD2 VCI or vehicle communications interface into the vehicle's diagnostic link connector and turn the ignition key to the on position. Then connect the BT608's test leads to the vehicle battery. The BT-608, like most handheld battery testers, is a conductance type tester, but it uses a proprietary test method developed by Autel called adaptive conductance. This allows for more accurate measurement of a battery's cold cranking ability and its reserve capacity. It works by sending a low frequency AC current through the battery. This is used to reveal just how much plate area is in the battery to hold and produce power. Now as a battery ages, the plates degrade and the conductance declines. Shorts, opens, and other cell defects also reduce conductance. Conductance testers, like the BT-608, make checking a vehicle's battery starting and charging system a quick and easy task regardless of the battery's state of charge. Now this is a valuable service to offer to your customers and also may open the door to service opportunities for your shop. With the leads connected and the battery still in the car, select the in-vehicle test option. The VCI will query the vehicle and automatically populate the data, including the specifications for the battery originally fitted to the vehicle. Now this is great information to have right from the start. The use of the proper battery is critical in vehicles that use a battery management system. If you find that the battery installed is incorrect for the vehicle application, well that could be the cause of any battery starting or charging system concern your customer may have. Which leads me to a discussion of some common mistakes that we're making when we're servicing, testing, or replacing a battery. One of the most common mistakes is improperly identifying what kind of battery is in the vehicle. Is it a conventional design or an AGM or EFB? Proper identification is a must so that you can input the proper parameter into the tester. Another common mistake is using a battery design that doesn't fit the vehicle application. For example, it used to be thought that conventional batteries could be replaced with an AGM, but now we're learning that that's not always the case. The reason is that the AGM battery can be easily damaged if mismatched with the vehicle's charging system. And if it's mounted in the engine compartment, the high heat load there can also lead to damage of the battery. So while you may be thinking you're offering your customer an upgrade, Unless that application has been vetted by the OEM, you may be setting them up for premature failure instead. Another common mistake is replacing an EFB battery with a conventional flooded cell design. Now the conventional battery was never intended to handle the demands of stop-start technologies. Nissan even released a TSB warning against the practice and specifying an OEM replacement part number. Back to the test procedure. Make sure that the test parameters match the battery in the car and if not, update them as necessary. 
The BT-608 will then lead the user through a series of tests to measure the health of the battery, starting, and charging systems. First is a test of the battery at rest, with no electrical loads applied. The next test is a test of the starting system and the battery's ability to meet the demand. Once the engine has started, the tester will move on to a test of the vehicle's charging system. With the first phase of the test performed with no electrical loads applied at idle and again at 2000 to 3000 RPM. With a baseline established, the charging system test is performed a second time, only this time with the electrical loads applied. It too is checked at idle and at 2000 to 3000 RPM. A complete report of the tests can be printed from the tool or emailed as a PDF. Be sure to share the report with your customer, and it's not a bad idea to keep a copy in the customer's file. If the battery requires replacement, the BT-608 will guide you through the process. Just select Battery Change from the menu. The first screen you'll see after establishing communication with the vehicle through the VCI is a map showing the replacement steps to follow. First among them is a list of suggestions on choosing a replacement. When choosing a replacement, most vehicle and battery manufacturers agree that you should stick with the same battery design as the vehicle originally came equipped with. Now, it's okay to replace a conventional with an EFB design, but don't replace either with an AGM battery unless specifically approved by the vehicle manufacturer. It's also important to use the same group size that the vehicle originally came equipped with. And it is okay to install a battery with a higher CCA rating than the original one, but never install one with a lower rating. The next step is an important one, preparing the vehicle for the replacement. It's best to use a memory saver installed in the DLC, and the tool walks you through the steps for replacing the battery with power on. You're probably well aware that if you simply disconnect the battery, that you're going to wipe out the memory of all the control modules on the vehicle. And this can cause everything from an infotainment system that no longer works properly, a customer's presets that have been wiped from the memory, even an engine that doesn't want to run right. All of that can be avoided with the use of a memory saver. So if you don't have one, consider adding one to your toolbox. And be careful when you disconnect the positive battery cable, there's going to be voltage there. Don't allow it to arc to ground. With the new battery installed, the next step the tool will take you through is a test of the replacement. And while it doesn't happen all the time, it is possible to get a bad battery right off the shelf. Another common mistake is failing to register the battery after replacement. If this step is not performed, the ECM will continue to use the learned charging profile it was using on the old battery. And this is going to result in an overcharge condition of the new battery and its premature failure. If you've noted that the battery fitted to the vehicle is not the battery it originally came with, now's a good time to use the diagnostic ability of the BT-608 to verify whether or not the registration process had been performed. If it hadn't, that could be the reason that your customer is questioning your recommendation for replacement when he just replaced it last year. The tool will ask you if you used a memory saver or not, and if not, you'll need to follow the steps in the battery reset menu option. This option will inform you of what systems need to be reset or reinitialized along with the supporting information you'll need to do so. The BT-608 incorporates into one tool all the different tools that you would need to perform a professional battery service. And with the step-by-step -step instructions, even the newest technician in the shop can perform these various services professionally each and every time. But that's not all this tool can do. The BT-608 also has some great diagnostic capabilities. For example, it can perform a full system scan like your big box scan tools, check for DTCs, freeze frame, 
access live data, and a lot more. Test and vehicle records can also be stored in the tool, and with the remote desk function, it can be shared with the local computer or provide access to Autel's tech support to allow them remote access to the tool to help you out if you have any problems. If you'd like more information about the Autel BT-608 or any of the diagnostic and specialty tools in the Autel line, visit www.autel.com. And as always, thanks for watching.